Hey my dear kiddos, how are you? This is your mathematics mentor Varsha and I welcome you all for this super amazing session, the summary of the topic relations and functions. Honestly speaking, this chapter is really easy. But what makes it difficult then? Do you also find it difficult? Yes, the only thing that makes it difficult is the need of class 11th basic concepts because this chapter is already present in class 11th we need to know everything that is taught in class 11th how to find domain how to find range what are the different types of functions what is a function what is a relation if we know those basics class 12th is very easy if you haven't find it easy i will make it for you today do not worry as you know i know, uh, note down all the points i'll be writing down all the points important points and summarizing the chapter towards the end few questions to give you the practical application of what we will be studying today so are you guys ready for it are you guys ready i, I would request all of you uh, if you want to study cover your basics there is a video available for the same chapter relations and functions with respect to class 11th so go and watch that video on the same channel i have recorded it it's present watch that first then watch this it will be very very helpful still because i know because i know some revision will be needed i cannot proceed without any revision of class 11 so i have definitely included you relax for some people who know few things of 11 you can continue with this video the first thing that we study about the chapter relations and functions is let's say you have two sets a and b these are two sets when i take its cartesian product cartesian product can you recall what is cartesian product a into B, it has all the ordered pairs. Suppose your set A is 1, 2, set B is 3, 4, then the Cartesian product will have all the possible ordered pairs like 1, 3, 1, 4, 2, 3 and 2, 4. Do you all agree with me? Yes, ma'am. That's your Cartesian product. From Cartesian product, we moved on to something called as relations. So, the definition of relation itself was... Relation is a subset of Cartesian product, right? Out of all these four ordered pairs, if I select few of them or all of them under certain condition, under certain relation, then that will be called as a relation set. Example, I put up a relation. Let a relation set be set of ordered pair x, y, where the first element x is second element minus 1 x is coming from set a y is coming from set b can you see i have put some relation between x and y x and y have a relation x should be y minus 1 so which elements out of this will satisfy relation given here the only ordered pair which satisfies this relation is 2 comma 3 and that's a part of my relation set so Everything may be a part of relation set, may not be a part of relation set. It has to qualify this. It just like human beings have relations, you and me have a relation. All the mathematical terms have relations. Mathematical numbers, objects, functions, elements have relations among them. We have to understand those relations and today we will be studying about those types of relations. Okay. So this is all about class 11. Next thing that we studied was total number of relations. How many total number of relations can we form? Total number of relations is equal to total number of subsets of this particular Cartesian product. And total number of subsets, let's say set A has P elements, set B has Q elements. Then total number of relations is given by the formula 2 raised to P Q. Relation set simply put is subset of Cartesian product A into B. It's a subset of Cartesian product. Remember that for relations. Okay. Fine. 
sets cartesian product relation number of relations then there was a small thing called as inverse of a relation where you just interchange the domain and range that brings to my next portion which is domain range a relation can be represented in different forms like your set builder form cartesian form this is set builder this not cartesian roster set builder roster one thing that i missed is arrow diagram right so a relation can also be expressed with the help of arrow diagrams 1 2 3 4 so only 2 and 3 were related to each other that's the arrow diagram for the previous example which i'm continuing if i ask you the domain and range for this particular question domain will be domain will be single element 2 range is only element 3 and something called as co domain which will be the entire set b co domain is your entire set b domain all the inputs range all the output in second set co domain is this entire set all right no questions so far very good from relations we jump to something called as functions right now relation has been formed it's time for marriage function and marriage function always will come with certain condition you know that marriages are never easy it has condition so a function a function a function will satisfy two condition always a function will satisfy two condition always first condition is every input should have an output second condition every input should have one and only one output now what is this input output let us understand with the help of arrow diagram is that okay next slide i hope you are able to connect with the relation relationship you can form easily with anyone just follow a simple rule x equal to y minus 1 a relation is formed but for condition that simple rule is not enough two extra conditions have come your way let me take few arrow diagrams to help you understand what is a relation what is a function what is not a relation what is not a function a b at the same time we will also understand the different names for domain and different names for co domain and range also uh is there a need for name fine connected connected is it a function is it a function no it is not a function what is the reason what is the reason all the inputs do not have an in output this is lonely i am so lonely so this input doesn't have an output it's not a function what about this one is it a function quick answer no it's not a function why each input oh 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 it is a function it is a function it is a function each input has an output each input has one and only one output this has only one output this has only one output this has only one output so it qualifies to be a function my dear boys and girls ah ah next one careful now mm 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 is this a function okay for your happiness is it the is this a function no what is the reason what is the excuse second condition is not satisfied this particular input this particular input has two outputs let's say this is one this is b and c one has two outputs b and c one has two outputs b and c not possible it's not a function we will not qualify it to be a function so function in simple words is nothing but a machine 
right wherein you give some input x you get an output y and there is this machine has an input x. it's obvious that a machine what kind of machine we will like we will like a juicer juicer is a machine we will like a juicer which when i give apple it should give me apple juice when i give you give it orange it should give me orange juice if input is 1 output should be 1 imagine if you are giving apple and it's giving you apple as well as banana juice banana juice banana shake whatever imagine you are giving apple and it's giving you two juices mixed uh, we won't like such a machine right you are not in a mood to have banana you are in a mood to have apple so one input cannot have two outputs one particular input cannot have two outputs it's not a proper machine 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 means function it's not a function also just imagine a case you have a juicer again juicer again you are not putting anything in the machine that's also not fine so each input should have an output this input you are putting in the machine you are putting apple but you are not getting anything out of it every input should have an output if you are putting apple you should get an apple juice <laughs> you put some apple in the juicer the juicer is not giving you anything that means it's a waste of money it's not a function you're giving an input but there is no output available not a function please remember the juicer example whenever you get confused with these two conditions very essential x called as domain x is also called as pre-image x is also the first element of ordered pair op ordered pair x is also your entire set a if you see for a function this entire set a is nothing but pre-image all the elements are inputs all the elements are input all the elements will form pre-image that is the entire set a these are the different names for inputs i'll also give it one more name input y is nothing but output one name is output the other name is a uh, range of course not codomain it's also called as image and if you write it in roster form then it will be the second element of ordered pair roster form in a roster form all the second element of ordered pair will be a range right the second element of ordered pair three four that becomes your range fine what is codomain? Codomain is same like your set B. The second set, the entire second set will be your codomain. 1, 2, 3, A, B, C. Domain will be, domain is a set of all inputs. Range is a set of all outputs. B is not an output. Codomain is nothing but your set B, which is A, B, C, all three. Can you see? Codomain is set B, domain is set A. For a function, domain is equal to set A. Range is whatever images you get. Fine. What else we studied in class 11th after studying the basics of domain, codomain, range? How to find domain and range? How to find domain and range, guys? Please visit the video lecture of class 11, which I've recorded quite in detail how to find the domain range. I've prepared nice charts with different methods four methods to find range three methods to find uh, four methods to find domain three methods to find range but 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 all of that i'm not going to teach now so very in in short in short let's understand what is domain and range what are the basic methods to find domain range so the two basic methods which you should be well aware well aware first method is Whenever you have denominator in the function, whenever denominator is present, all we do is put denominator should not be zero, of course, because function will become not different. Denominator not zero, solve it, you will get x not equal to k. k is some constant. If you think this is a bouncer, visit that video. If you understand, perfect. Solve this, you will get x not equal to k. That means domain can be all real numbers except this element k. If x is not k, domain is not k. Remove k from domain. Second type is root of function. Whenever you have root of function, 
it simply means that anything inside the root should be greater than equal to 0 because we deal with real numbers we don't want negative inside the root solve this how will you solve using wavy curve wavy curve method wavy curve method assuming all of you know you solve it you will find x and domain will be equal to x whatever you x you will get that's your domain two methods for domain similarly shall i write two methods for range yes i'm just writing the important ones the first method is algorithm you follow an algorithm y is equal to f of x given to you express it in terms of y like bring your x on one side shift everything to the other side x equal to f of y further further now think what values of y can you put find out allowed values of y allowed values of y how will you find out you will basically use domain method you will be using domain method whether if it's denominator you will take denominator non zero if it's in the root y is in the root you will consider root value to be equal to or greater than zero right so here we are checking for y which structure it follows first one or second one using that structure find the value of y and range will be equal to your y if you have solved any question regarding it you will be able to understand what i am saying the second approach is the second approach for finding range is whenever interval domain interval is given suppose you have been given domain is from 1 to 3 so you just substitute your domain in f of x and find the least and maximum value your range you will get substitute the domain least value and maximum value in f of x you will get the range all right so these two methods can be broadly used to find range well there are other methods you are smart enough to understand what i am saying now okay guys after studying domain and range what was the next thing that we were interested class 11th done now shall i move to class 12th long time let's go to class 12th which is types of relations ha 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 types of relations now let's see what kind of relations this maths has how many types of relations have you studied some might have studied 5 some might have studied 6 some might have studied 8 we will go with the eight. maximum you know varsha ma oh yeah <laughs> the first type of relation is void or also called as null relation now the name itself says whenever your relation set has nothing in it it's a null or void relation nothing in it just like my brain a a a a your brain a uh, our brain null void and it's like a hermit a person a sanyasi a hermit who has no relation at all no relation with anyone empty relation in life null second type of relation is your universal relation what is a universal relation now this is universal relation uh, some people would say god because he has relation with each and every human being living non living on earth i would say science because science has relation with each and every thing around us all of us so because science has relation with everyone it's a universal relation bringing it to maths when your relation set has entire cartesian product when your relation set is equal to a into a we are talking about relations defined in set a right we are talking about relations defined in set a so r is a into a third one identity relation what is an identity relation you know imagine a family of selfish people imagine a family of selfish people that means in that family you have everyone who is just relating to themselves they do not have any relations with the outside world no connections no relations just with themselves with themselves like um 
let me write if there is a set of ordered pair a b where a where a is related to b and a is equal to b when a and b are equal and they are related to itself every element relating to itself this word only is important every element relating to itself only not with anybody else fourth one reflexive now what is reflexive now reflexive is a little relaxed family in this family there are selfish people there are non selfish people which means f a comma a belongs to relation set for all a belonging to set a here also i must mention um, a comma b both belongs to set a every element relating to itself every element relating to itself do you need an example see i am a hermit i can read your mind <laughs> okay so identity relation will be let's say if you have 1 1 2 2 3 3 that's an identity relation can you see every element very selfish family but here there is 1 1 there is 1 2 there is 2 2 and there is 3 4 and there is 3 3 and there is 4 4 can you see all the elements are related to themselves as well as to others like 1 2 3 4 they are related to others but they are also related to themselves it's important 1 1 2 2 3 3 4 4 every element is relating to itself that's important i'm not saying only they can be related to others also very good very good next one fifth one after reflexive we have symmetric relation what is a symmetric relation a symmetric relation is a relation okay i shall take this on next slide okay hmm yeah symmetric relation is a relation in which if a comma b belongs to relation set then b comma a should also belong to relation set for all a comma b belonging to set a, a and b are part of set a. If A B is there, B A should be there. It's like a two-sided love story. If A B A connecting to B, then B should also connect to it. Happy. If A connects with B, B should also connect with A. It's called symmetric relation. Ha ha. The next one, the next one is anti-symmetric. What is anti-symmetric relation? A lot of confusion occurs here. anti-symmetric relation says if a comma b belongs to relation set right and b comma a also belongs to relation set very good happy condition is implies a is equal to b then it is called as anti-symmetric couldn't understand need examples okay i heard you see i'm a hermit <laughs> okay guys let me take couple of relations r1 r2 r3 r4 hmm what should be my examples 1 1 1 2 uh, we will identify which of them is symmetric which of them is anti symmetric which of them is not anti symmetric right okay 2 1 that's it One, 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 three, three, one, two, two. That's it. Okay, one, one, five, one. That's it. Do I need one more example? Let's see. Firstly, um, R one is it symmetric? One, 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 two is there. Two, one is there. Yes, of course, it is symmetric. One connecting to two, two connecting to one. Happy. One three is there. Three one is there. One one is there. Two two is there. 
is it symmetric or anti symmetric so anti symmetric says if 1 3 is there and 3 1 is there then 1 and 3 should be equal is 1 equal to 3 no that means it is not anti symmetric it is again a symmetric relation next one 1 1 is there 5 1 is there anti symmetric says if 1 1 is there like 1 is connected to other other is connected to first they should be equal yes they are equal what about 5 1 5 is connecting to 1 5 is connecting to 1 is 1 connecting to 5 the other part is not there so we are not bothered of the other part forget 5 is connecting to 1 it is definitely not symmetric it is definitely not symmetric because 5 1 is there 1 5 is not there but is it anti symmetric yes it is anti symmetric now why anti symmetric 1 1 is there people will get confused that if it is anti symmetric it should be not symmetric no that's not the case always suppose you have an example 1 1 only is it non symmetric no it is symmetric also it is anti symmetric also isn't it symmetric yes because 1 1 is there 1 1 is there happy symmetric is it anti symmetric 1 1 is there 1 1 is there 1 equal to 1 anti symmetric so it is both symmetric as well as anti symmetric so please do not get confused that symmetric and anti symmetric are opposites of each other no symmetric and asymmetric are opposites of each other like if it is not symmetric you can also call it call it as asymmetric but you will not call it as anti symmetric anti symmetric is when and they are equal equal if they are equal anti symmetric different symmetric got it very very clear six types moving on to the next one what is the next one transitive what we mean by transitive relation transitive says if a comma b belongs to relation set and b comma c also belongs to relation set then definitely a comma c should also belong to relation set friend of friend also becomes a friend isn't it enemy of enemy becomes a friend we are not talking about that my friend his friend becomes my friend that's your simple transitive relation okay it transits the relation from a to b and b to c that means a and c connected if you find a c connected it's a transitive relation there is special case under transitive relation the special case the default transitive relation says if a comma b belongs to relation set and the second part b comma c is not defined still it will be a transitive relation still it is transitive still it is transitive it is very important please mark it Please mark it absolutely important. That means I am connected to him. He is not connected to anyone else. Still it's a transitive relation. Example you want? I hear you. Suppose R1. I always start with 1, 1. 1, 2. 2, 3. 1, 3. R2. 1, 1. 1, 2. 2, 4. R3. 1, 1. 1, 2. Let's find out which one of them is transitive, non-transitive. First one, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3 and then 1 and 3 also connected. The relation is passed. It is transitive. Condition satisfied. A to B, B to C, A and C connected. Second one, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 4. Aha! What about 1 and 4? I question what, where is the relation between 1 and 4? Not there. It is not transitive. Yeah. Last one. 1, 1, 1, 2. It's a special case of transitive. 1, 2 is there. I will not question about 2 and someone else. If there is nothing. 2 is not related with anybody else. 2 is nice, simple man. I am connected to 2. 2 is not connecting to anybody else. It's a default transitive situation. 
आर यू एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस एंड लास्ट बट नॉट द लेस्ट लेट मी एकोमेडेट इट ऑन द सेम पेज इक्वी वैलेंस रिलेशन वेन एनी पर्टिकुलर रिलेशन इज अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ रिफ्लेक्सिव सिमेट्रिक एंड ट्रांजिटिव इट इज कॉल्ड एज इन इक्वी वैलेंस रिलेशन डू यू गेट इट वेरी गुड वेरी वेरी गुड नॉ टोटल नंबर ऑफ इक्वैलेंस रिलेशंस टोटल नंबर ऑफ इक्वैलेंस रिलेशंस आर इज आस्ट इन अ क्वेश्चन इट इज गिवन बाय द फॉर्मूला टू रेज टू एन माइनस वन एम माइनस एन वेर एन इज नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट्स इन सेट एन All right. You can by heart it for n equal to one, two, and three. Generally, that's what is asked to us. Okay. After studying the types of relations, I guess we have broadly covered types of relations. Can I move to types of functions, people? Let's quickly move to types of functions. There are four different types of functions that we will be studying in this. chapter okay let me take some good da not bad yeah ah uh, ah uh, stay there right okay not bad to थ्री हाँ हाँ फोर नॉट बैड चलो गुड आई कैन डू इट बेटर विथ माई हैंड्स वट आर द फोर टाइप्स ऑफ फंक्शन द फर्स्ट टाइप ऑफ फंक्शन इज वन टू वन फंक्शन द सेकेंड इज एन ऑपोजिट ऑफ वन टू वन विच इज मैनी टू वन थर्ड इज ऑन टू फंक्शन एंड फोर्थ इज ऑपोजिट ऑफ ऑन टू विच इज इन टू फंक्शन गाइज वन टू वन इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज Injective function. Onto is also called as surjective function. When you combine injective and surjective, you will get bijective. Okay, fair enough. Next, what is one to one function? There are various ways to find out whether a function is one to one, many to one. Let me. put down all of them one by one which color 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 which color do you want in it let me know in the comments yeah which color suits well for the lectures hai na let me know i'll be using that okay one to one function one to one function by definition it says if x1 is not equal to x2 implies f of x1 is also not equal to f of x2 If x1 not equal to x2 implies f of x1 not equal to f of x2, it's one to one. Couldn't understand. Let me simplify. Simple. In terms of arrow diagram. Can you see? Every input has one and only one output. Okay. It's not many to one. It's not like this. Okay. So yeah. It's not like this. Or it's rather not like this. it's not many going to one it's not many to one it's one to one each one of each input going to a different output that second way of identifying through a arrow diagram first way second way first way second way what's the other i'll write its counterpart immediately if x1 is not equal to x2 implies f of x1 is equal to f of x2 that means the inputs are different but outputs are same inputs are different but outputs are same different input same output different input same output different input different output so this is many to one third way is this is by calculation this is by arrow diagram now by graph what you will do is draw the graph of function suppose y equal to x 
you will draw the graph of function and check for horizontal line test the graph of y equal to x is this the graph of y equal to x square is this draw a horizontal line draw a horizontal line and see whether it intersects at how many points the horizontal line intersects the graph at one and only one point it's one to one function if the horizontal line intersects the graph at more than one point suppose y equal to mod x y equal to x square if it intersects at more than one point it's many to one so this is called as horizontal line test horizontal line test is the third way for finding out whether a function is one to one or many to one fourth way is it it's applicable if your f dash of x is greater than equal to zero or your f dash of x is less than equal to zero that means it's monotonic either increasing or decreasing if your function is just increasing or just decreasing then it is one to one function if it is both increasing decreasing increasing decreasing it's many to one if it's just increasing or just decreasing one to one got the four ways for finding out one to one many to one okay now let's come to on to and into very simple on to and into don't have different lot of ways to find the simple meaning of on to function is when the range is equal to codomain when the range is equal to codomain it's on to and when the range is not equal to codomain codomain set b range all the images if your set b matches with all the images on to example okay can you see the range is same as codomain codomain is 1 to 3 range is also 1 to 3 Yeah. Or I can take this. Can you see? Codomain is one, two, three, four. But range is only one, two. Range is only one, two. Codomain is one, two, three, four. Range and codomain not matching. It's an on to function. Guys, while solving questions on one to one and many to one, that is to find the injectivity. Whenever a question is to find. injectivity i am writing it down here what we do is we consider let f of x1 be equal to f of x2 while solving for injectivity let f of x1 be equal to f of x2 then solve it if x1 is equal to x2 it's 1 to 1 that's injective if x1 is not equal to x2 it's many to one that's not injective right check the injectivity this is the steps that we will follow understood all about types of functions boys and girls great guys the way there is horizontal line test in a similar way we have something called as vertical line test but <laughs> vertical line test is to not test whether a function is subjective surjective it is for checking whether it's a function or not whether it is function or not how do we check vertical line test suppose if you can uh, draw the graphs your graph is let's say like this one graph the other graph is let's say like this the first one draw a draw a, a vertical line it's cutting the graph at only one point so it is a function the second one it's cutting the graph at more than one point it is not a function can you understand the way vertical line test works for whether it's a function or not horizontal line test work for whether it's one to one or many to one there is nothing for subjective no graphical way you have to find range you have to find codomain and that is why the information on how to find range 
becomes in important how to find domain how to find range of class 11 becomes extremely important to approach questions on types of functions which combinations are possible here by the way can a function be both many to one and one to one no can a function be one to one and on to yes function be one to one and into yes so these two are suppose category a and these two are category b there can be combination of a and b that cannot be combination within a or within b not possible and these two bijective all right guys moving on to the next topic which is composite of a function and then last one inverse of a function soon we'll move to the question answers what is composite composite suppose there's a function f from x to y another function g from y to z x y z this is f this is g the composite of them will be called as g of f which is nothing but in the function g your input is f of x or you can also write it as g of f of x which is from which is from x to z that means in the function g input is f this is your x x1 this is your x this is f of x and this is g of f of x this f of x is being the input of g this f of x is used as an input in g right so ultimately g of f of x in g f is the input x is ultimately going from here to here x to z becomes your composite function different types of composite functions can be formed using these two example g of f we just saw f of g can be formed g of g can be formed f of f can be formed simply putting together when you take one function and make it as the input of other function if g is f is bijective g is bijective its composite will also be bijective all its composite will also be bijective finding composite functions and questions on them are very easy i think let's go to the last topic which is inverse of a function the inverse of a function if you know what is f f inverse f is going from a to b a is the domain b is the codomain do not get confused a is the domain and students say b is the no, 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 no. a is the domain b is the codomain f inverse will have b as the domain and a becomes the codomain just reverse well what are the steps to find inverse i am noting down the steps first one if the question is y is equal to f of x what you will do is the way in finding range bringing x on one side shifting everything on the other side similar keep x on one side shift everything on the other side last two steps if this is done inverse is found replace your x replace the x with f inverse of y and wherever you find y replace it with x these two replacement you have to do these two replacement will easily give you f inverse this two replacement will easily give you inverse function is that okay the very important condition for finding inverse let's talk about it the first foremost important condition for finding inverse is function should be bijective function should be bijective do you know the reason why if it is not bijective and you are trying to take its inverse it will become a it will not be a function it will become a not defined function for example let's take a many to one function and try to find its inverse this is many to one if i find its inverse that is reverse a and b this is function if i reverse a and b b comes here a comes here 
only two yeah this is what i'll get is it a function according to the condition question of function every input should have an output every sh input should have one and only one output your input is having two output so then this f and this f inverse will become not defined so in order to keep it defined we need not many to one but one to one similarly if instead of on to i take an into function since we are doing y2 you know this is a function uh, let's take an into function here 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 mm. this suppose this is an into function can you see lonely i am so lonely in an into function there will be one at least one element in set b which doesn't have any pre image there will be at least one element because the codomain is not equal to range it's into let's try to reverse it and see if we get a function b to a finding a inverse when i do b to a it violates the definition of function which demands that every input should have an output here the input is not having an output it's not a function so the condition it should be bijective i hope the condition is very well understood by all of you let's talk about few properties of inverse few of the properties of inverse of a function are the first property out of all of them would be inverse why okay think right? okay inverse is always unique inverse will always be unique you will not get two inverse for a particular thing second if function is bijective if function is bijective remember its inverse will also be bijective third inverse follows the reversal law just like in transpose suppose it is f of g inverse you can write it as g inverse of g inverse of f inverse right next if f of g is equal to x and g of f is equal to x let's say both are equal in such a case f is g inverse and g is f inverse generally f of g g of f are not same do not assume that they will be always equal they will be different okay next if i have a function what is like an identity function if i have a function f from a to b and a function g from b to a right so g is inverse of f can you see they both are inverses right what will be f o f what will be f o f f o f will be i of a and g of g will be i of b they both will be an identity function you will get the same output as the input what is an identity function the output is same as input g of g rather i'll write g of f both are same g in g, g in which a is the input so ib is what you will get fair enough because i am doing this let's start with a question of inverse what say guys let us start with a question of inverse because we have ended on inverse there is one small thing left shall we do it shall we not hmm i can hear you all saying let's do it hmm simple even and odd functions you must have seen it not have seen it not a big deal what do you mean by even function when f of minus x is equal to f of x it's called an even function example y is equal to x square 
in this in this when you put x as minus x right suppose your f of x is minus x the whole square okay sorry suppose your f of x is x square what is f of minus x minus x the whole square which is same as x square which is same as f of x can you see f of minus x same as f of x even function what's an odd function f of minus x is equal to minus f of x example y is equal to x cube y is equal to x or y is equal to x cube hai na f of x is x cube i'm just solving this continuing it here what will be f of minus x it will be minus x the whole cube this is minus of x cube that means f of minus x you can see minus is coming out and you're getting back minus f of x that's an odd function similarly questions can come figure out whether a function is even or odd and you may solve it sorry hmm this slide not needed this slide yes i am taking a question now everybody question says there is a function f from real to real where y is equal to e raised to x minus e raised to minus x by 2 you have to find its inverse now before i find its inverse i will be checking whether it's 1 to 1 and on 2 that means whether it's bijective or not why i'm taking this question because through this question whatever we just studied about 1 to 1 many to 1 on to into will be revised and you will also be revising about inverse so basically your entire functions types of functions will be revised with this question in a way okay to find whether it's 1 to 1 or not let me simplify y is equal to e raised to x minus 1 upon e raised to x whole divided by 2 that's e raised to 2x minus 1 upon 2 times e raised to x okay there are different ways to find whether it is one to one or not graphical way arrow diagram etc etc the easiest of all is to find the derivative let's find first derivative and see whether it's always greater than equal to 0 or not derivative of mm i should have directly found right instead of separating we could have directly found out okay let this be here i'm writing f dash of x from here derivative of e raised to x is e raised to x minus derivative of e raised to x is minus e raised to minus x and then this minus makes it plus upon 2 is anyways a constant can you see can you see e raised to x is always a positive number e raised to minus x will always be a positive number adding them f dash of x will always be greater than equal to 0 therefore function is 1 to 1 function is 1 to 1 no doubt injective guys e is a number 2.7 in 2.7 raised to any number you take positive or negative it's always a positive outcome now let's figure out the range for finding range can you see the input is minus infinity to plus infinity that means range will be range will be substituting your input input in the output f of minus infinity to f of plus infinity do you remember the second method of finding range i wrote two methods of finding range one by algorithm second by substituting the domain interval getting the least and maximum value so if i put minus infinity in this what am i getting i'll get minus infinity and if i put plus infinity i'll get plus infinity you can check for yourself that's your range minus infinity to plus infinity round bracket is that is that all real numbers so that means range is equal to codomain and when range is equal to codomain k 
can we say it is an onto function yes it is onto one to one that means it is bijective function inverse exist inverse exist how do we find the inverse the task how do we find the inverse so for finding the inverse follow the steps which we discussed just follow the steps your this is the function i am writing it on the next page the question i am writing it on the next step y is equal to e raised to 2x minus 1 upon 2 times e raised to x am i correct just check hmm cross multiply 2 y e raised to x is equal to e raised to 2 x minus 1 simply find making it quadratic e raised to x the whole square minus 2 y times e raised to x minus 1 equal to 0 and solving it in a quadratic fashion this will be minus b plus or minus root of b square minus 4 a c upon 2 times a that's equal to 2 y plus or minus 4 coming out of the root as 2 y square plus 1 by 2. 2 taking common y plus or minus root of y square plus 1. Guys, that's your e raised to x. Now, tell me one thing. e raised to x will always be positive. It cannot be negative. So, can I take this minus sign? Of course not. e raised to x will be only y plus root of y square plus 1. Take log on both sides. Take log on both sides because we are interested in keeping x on the LHS. Right. Remember the second step was to keep x on one side, shift everything to the other. So, if I want x on uh, left side, log e will be 1. x is equal to log of y plus root of y square plus 1. And the last step, replace x, replace x with f inverse of y and replace your y with x. Do you remember the last two steps? What is this? x plus root of x square plus 1. Isn't it? Okay. That's the inverse. That's the way to find the inverse in fact. That is the way how you find a inverse. Understood? Pakka, pakka, pakka. Another question shall I take? This question, have a look. You can go back, check again. Now, suppose another question f of x is x square minus 3x plus 2. Question is find f of f. With this, I will be finishing inverse and composite. Then moving on to few questions of reflexive transitive symmetric. Just to get hold of it. Because it was done some 45 minutes back. You need a revision. Wherever there is x, substitute it as f of x. Wherever you see x, substitute it as f of x. What is f of x in written? x square minus 3x plus 2. The whole square minus 3 times x square minus 3x plus 2 plus 2. Oh my god. A oh my god. <laughs> you have to find a minus b the whole square. I think I'll leave it upon you. I think I'll leave it upon you. Please do this a minus b. It's just first term square. A, a plus b plus c the whole square is a square plus b square plus c square plus 2 times ab plus bc plus ac plus abc. So that you will do your open, open, open. You should get some answer. Just for idea, you got to know. Okay. Do I have questions now? This slide not needed, this slide not needed. I am going to the question. A is given, relation set is given. You have to identify whether R is reflexive, symmetric, reflexive, not transitive, symmetric, transitive, neither symmetric, not transitive. Well, before that e is the chapter very well revised. Very, very well revised. Great, awesome, superb. So, 1-1 one, one is there, 2-2 two, two is there, 3-3 three, three is there. Oh yeah, it is reflexive. 1-2 is there, 2-1 is not there, not symmetric. Transitive, is it transitive? 1-2 there, 2-3 there, 1-3 also there, it's transitive. So reflexive and transitive but not symmetric, where is it? Option A is the best match. Option A is the best match, I feel, yeah. Next. If A is greater than equal to B on real numbers, this R is 
telling you that it's defined on real number both input outputs or everything real number what kind of relation is this okay is it reflexive that means a greater than equal to a is every number greater than or equal to itself yes every number is equal to itself it's reflexive is it symmetric that means a is greater than equal to b implies b is greater than equal to a we don't know let's think uh 2 is greater than equal to 1 will it imply 1 is greater than equal to 2 no that means it is not symmetric what about transitive a greater than equal to b and b greater than equal to c will imply a is greater than equal equal to c let's take an example 8 is greater than equal to 4 and 4 is greater than equal to 2 will it imply 8 is greater than equal to 2 yes so it is transitive once again reflexive and transitive but not symmetric option b guys students generally ask me a question what question do you also come across this question while solving this is objective no problem but if it's a subjective paper we get confused whether to solve it with the help of general general example general case or to take particular example and solve it now for this i have a solution whenever you have to prove whether it's reflexive symmetric transitive you have to take a general case if you are telling in the examination if you are telling on your paper to the examiner that it is reflexive then you have to take a general case to say it's reflexive it's transitive it's symmetric that means whenever it's a yes yes you have to take a general case and whenever it's a no that means it's not reflexive it's not symmetric or it's not transitive now to disprove anything a particular example is enough an example is enough like for your if i wouldn't have taken this still i can with a general case this is a general case a b c can be anything with a general case i can say this is true with a general case this is true for yes a general case needed for no for no that means because it's not symmetric a particular example you show in the examination with the help of this you will be able to fetch all marks always not even a half mark will be deducted i hope this confusion is clear now great a function from real to real 3x choose the correct option 1 to 1 on to many to 1 on to 1 to 1 not on to neither 1 to 1 or on to if you draw the graph you will understand out of it 3x is a line passing through origin by horizontal line test i can say clearly it's 1 to 1 well if you want to do it theoretically mathematically what was the first step let f of x1 be equal to f of x2 in the examination in the subjective paper you will do this step in the objective no. three cancels x1 is equal to x2 if x1 is equal to x2 it's 1 to 1 cool fair enough what about the range y is equal to 3x what is the range for such a question if domain is all real number domain is all real number substituting the domain x as all real you will get the range also all real numbers is range equal to codomain yes because codomain is also real this is codomain range equal to codomain it is on to then such a function is one to one on to option a option a is correct for this 1 by x 1 to 1 on to bijective not defined 1 by x reciprocal function draw the graph it is not a function when i take this input at zero this function becomes not defined it is not a function it is not defined what about this a function from natural to natural is it subjective that is on to injective which means one to one bijective both a and b or none of this hmm if i take any natural number firstly i want to find whether it's one to one or not very simple 2n1 plus 3 is equal to 2n2 plus 3 instead of x we have n no problem three cancels 2n1 equal to 2n2 
n1 is equal to n2 it is 1 to 1 so i shall i go with option b no wait 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 what about the on to ness domain all natural number range if i put n as 1 2 plus 3 i'll get 5 if i put n as 2 4 plus 3 7 n as 3 9 n as 4 i am getting all the odd numbers starting from 5 is range equal to codomain no ways codomain is also natural number isn't it domain codomain range and codomain are not equal not on to that means it is not surjective yes we can go with option number b injective it is strictly an injective function maximum number of equivalence relations 2 raised to 3 8 minus 3 5 already done and generally what is the question the question is suppose students ask me uh, or let me only give you exam example if x is brother of y or uh, this relation called as brother is what reflexive symmetric or transitive first one is it reflexive is x brother of x is it possible you are brother of your own self i am my own brother not possible so it is reflexive no what about symmetric x is brother of y does it imply y is also brother of x not really if x is brother of y y can be sister of x it doesn't have to be brother if x is brother of y y can be sister of x so such a relation is not symmetric it is not symmetric what about transitive is it transitive that means if x is brother of y and at the same time y is brother of z does it mean x is brother of z x is brother of y y is also brother of z is x brother of z of course it is a transitive relation it is a transitive relation shown with a general example right with this i would like to end this session there are loads of examples have fun studying this chapter and if any doubts difficulties suggestion let me know in the comment section i'll be back with another powerful session till then take care of yourself thank you so much bye bye signing off